Amen. Glory be to the Father indeed. We thank God for his blessings in our lives. We are in a worship and sermon series that we are calling Living Our Values. They are based on our five values of ministry here at First Presbyterian Church. In Christ United, our values of ministry are joyful worship, gracious invitation, prayerful study, sacrificial service, and caring connections. We value these at First Presbyterian Church because we value these as Christians in our lives. We explored joyful worship and gracious invitation the past couple of Sundays. Today, we will learn more about sacrificial service. Before we do, please pray with me. God, we are here to worship you. We give this time to you. And we pray now for your spirit to open our hearts and minds so that we would hear and heed your message of sacrificial service, especially to those in need. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In John's Gospel, before his last Passover, on probably the Wednesday of Holy Week, Jesus is still teaching his disciples and the crowds. In his last class that was open to the public, his last time of teaching where crowds were there, he says these words, whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. Serves and servant are weighty words in the New Testament because Jesus uses them, of course, and they come from the Greek word diakonia. Does that word sound familiar to you? If it does, it's probably because our English word deacon is based on that Greek word diakonia. We have deacons, of course, here at First Presbyterian Church and in other Presbyterian churches. Deacons are in a number of churches, regardless of denomination. And we have deacons in this church and in many of our churches because there were deacons in the early church. We read about deacons, for example, on the pages of the books of Acts, where we see them helping widows in their community and others in need by providing them food. In fact, Diakonia is a word that is used most often in the New Testament for Christian service. So in the New Testament, when they are talking about Christian service, they use that word diakonia more times than not. In fact, it appears at least 100 times in the New Testament. When Jesus says, whoever serves me must follow me, he connects service with discipleship. To be his disciple then is to serve. Servanthood is an essential ingredient in discipleship. Or we can think of it like this. If we had a Christian ID card, our picture on that card would be of us serving. That is how essential service is to us as Christians how essential service is to our Christian identity. And for Jesus, service is about being where he is. He said, where I am, there my servant will be also. And where is Jesus? He is sacrificing for others. We see his sacrificial service in his healing ministry. He heals lepers the blind, the lame, people he knows like Peter's mother-in-law. He heals many more than he does not know. Paralytics, the possessed, people who are broken in body and in spirit. We believe he is showing what God would have for us in our lives, that we would be healed and whole. We also see his sacrificial service in his compassion. When we read that Jesus had compassion on the pages of the New Testament. That Greek word translated compassion 
comes from a Greek word that literally means guts, a, a visceral emotion. So Jesus' sacrificial service is driven by a gut-wrenching compassion for people created in the image of God. We see his sacrificial service supremely in his suffering and death on the cross for us, for you and for me. That is why we value sacrificial service, because our Lord exemplified it in his own life, and he expects us, his disciples, to exemplify it in our own lives. Other passages flesh out sacrificial service. Other passages in the Bible say more about what sacrificial service looks like. In 1 John 3, for example, we read, we know the Lord's love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. John explains what he means in the next verse when he says, How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? The Greek phrase translated refuses help may be translated closes one's heart. So to lay down our lives is to open our hearts to people, especially to people in need. Sacrificial service looks like that. James echoes what John says in his letter. In James's own letter, he writes, if a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill. And yet you do not supply their bodily needs. What is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. James sees faith as lived in our works, in our actions, especially in what we do for people in need. So talk truly is cheap. Our actions will speak louder than words as Christians, according to James. We also think of the parable of the Good Samaritan in Luke's gospel. That's a vivid portrait of what it looks like to love our neighbors. In that story, that Samaritan helps an enemy. So we are even to help those who are our enemies. That's what it means to love our neighbor, to love any person in need. In these examples and in others like them, sacrificial service includes giving sacrificially of our money to those in need. Indeed, in the Sermon on the Mount, our Lord names almsgiving as a practice that he expects us as his disciples to practice. He says that almsgiving matters as much to him as praying does, as prayer does. So we should be giving to the poor, giving to those who need our money. So in the Bible, sacrificial service includes giving sacrificially to people in need through the church or on our own. Our own sacrificial service should mirror what we read on the pages of the Bible. We should lay down our lives by opening our hearts to people, especially to people in need. In our worship service today, we've seen pictures of us doing that as a church, us loving our neighbors as a church, our discipleship expressed in compassionate service, especially to people in need. We've done that, loved our neighbors, by working with Habitat for Humanity, for example, providing, helping to provide a home for Carolina Ramirez and her family. We've done that through the asks here at the church, those times this past summer when we asked for money to help those most in need in this pandemic. And we, for example, have given money to students as they begin school and need that. We've done that, loved our neighbors here by making face masks, hundreds of them, and giving them to people in nursing homes, to first responders, to us here at the church, to any person that needs one. We've done that through our pen ministry, our people in need ministry, based right here in our church building. 
That's where we give money that you provide to those who need it for utility bills, rent, or food. And we've done that. We have loved our neighbors here by donating canned goods, donating them every week. Canned goods that we use in that people in need ministry here at the church and that we give also to other food pantries and soup kitchens in the community that need them to serve those most in need. And the need is very great in this pandemic as we know. And we've done that by doing more than I am able to name here in this sermon. Mission that is local and global. I haven't even begun to name the mission that we are still doing globally. I pray that we will always value sacrificial service in our Lord's name as a church. I also pray that we will always value sacrificial service personally in our own lives, that we will always serve people sacrificially. In the movie Pay It Forward, a seventh grade social studies teacher gives his students an unusual assignment. They have to come up with a plan to change the world and then act on it. In the movie, one of the teacher's students, Trevor, decides to turn payback on its head by paying it forward instead. Trevor's plan involves helping three people in need. He helps, for example, a homeless man that he meets on the streets. As part of Trevor's plan, each person he helps is to pay it forward to three more people so that it ripples out more and more and more, changing the world. That is an example of sacrificial service. Every time we lay down our lives for someone, we pay it forward. We pay forward our Lord's sacrificial service for us. Imagine, imagine how we could change the world by paying it forward to people again and again and again. We should pay forward our Lord's sacrifice even when the demands on our time are such that we don't think we have the time to do it. Even when it means sacrificing what we had planned to do, even when we would really rather not do it, it's not necessarily convenient, even when we think we've already done our good deed for the day, even when our culture sees their need as their problem and not mine. God's Spirit who lives in us inspires us and empowers us to overcome obstacles like these so that we do pay forward our Lord's sacrifice for us again and again and again. You do it when you are with a loved one suffering from dementia or some other debilitating disease or disorder. You do it when you care for the dying by holding their hand and walking with them from this side of eternity to the next. You do it when you give sacrificially of your money to people in need through the church and on your own. You do it when, how will you sacrificially serve people even this day? Led by God's Spirit, we can change the world through sacrificial service. Alleluia. Amen. Please join me in prayer. God of our lives, through your Spirit, help us, personally and as your church, to follow Jesus by sacrificially serving others, bearing one another's burdens, being with people in their times of need, being a friend to those who are lonely, loving our neighbors by laying down our lives for them, opening our hearts to them again and again and again. Led by your Spirit, God, inspire us and empower us to change the world 
through lives of sacrificial service. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Having proclaimed God's word in scripture and in sermon, let us join our voices in saying what it is we believe in the words of the greatest commandment of our Lord. Our Lord said, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And a second commandment is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all of the law and the prophets. Amen.